Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system, a homemade problem. We have Px times Qx. Px and Qx are polynomials, by the way. And their product is x cubed minus 6x minus 9. And their sum is x squared plus 4x. So can we find polynomials that satisfy these two equations? Let's find out. I'll be presenting three methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I want to go ahead and use substitution. From the second equation, let's isolate q of x, which can be written as x squared plus 4x minus p of x. So my goal is to write everything in terms of p of x. And then substitute this into the first equation, which is the product. So now p of x multiplied by q of x, which I can replace with this. And the product is equal to x cubed minus 6x minus 9. Great. Now, my goal is to solve for p of x because that's the only variable. Even though x is a variable, I'm trying to find p of x in terms of x. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope it does. So, you can go ahead and call it something if you want. Uh, let's say, let's call p of x maybe y. Okay. And don't ask why. And then our goal will be to solve for y. Okay. So first, I notice x squared plus 4x is going to be multiplied by y minus y squared equals x cubed minus 6x minus 9. And then let's put everything on the right hand side where y squared is positive. And then we're just going to add the constant. In this case, x, anything in terms of x like this expression right here will be considered a constant. And can we do it even though p of x is a... Uh, function of x? Yes, we can. We can just pretend that x cubed minus 6x six, six minus 9 is constant for now. Our purposes, okay? Because the quadratic formula works either way. So now let's, did I say the quadratic formula? I gave it away. Okay, anyways, we're about to do it. So we're going to use the quadratic formula y equals negative b, right? Plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4b squared minus 4ac and a is 1 so I don't need to worry about it all over 2a which is 2 nice only nice if you can simplify the expression under the radical let's go ahead and focus on that if you square x squared plus 4x you're going to get x to the fourth power plus 8x cubed plus 16x squared and then from that minus 4x cubed plus 24x plus 36 and I need to square root that. So this is the discriminant, in other words, delta, if I can simplify delta, I can just plug it in, okay? So delta from here is just gonna be, in other words, the discriminant. If you combine like terms for x cubed plus 16x squared plus 24x plus 36. And I need to square root that. Uh-oh, is this the square of something? And the answer is yes. You know how we're going to find out? There's a couple of ways to go about it, but the easiest one is probably just square root the first term, square root the constant term, and put something like ax plus 6 in the middle. ax in the middle. Now, when you square something like this, you should be getting the answer. Why? Because x to the fourth can only come from x squared squared, and 36 can only come from 6 uh, squared. But wait a minute, how do you know that these are plus signs? Well, first of all, we, all, we don't have any minus signs. So that's probably positive. And A can be, I don't think A can be negative. I think A needs to be positive too. Because if we had one minus sign, some terms would be negative. Make sense? Or a minus, whatever you call it. So our goal is to solve for A in this equation. But without further ado, can I tell you that A is equal to 2? You can easily find it. In other words, our discriminant is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 6 quantity squared. That's easy to find. Just expand it and just set it equal to the expression. And you know what? You're going to have more than one equation, but they're all going to give you the same a value. Make sense? So now we have the discriminant. We can just plug it in. y is equal to x squared plus 4x with a plus minus sign, the square root of the discriminant, which is x squared plus 2x plus 6 divided by 2. Now, why are there two solutions? Do you know why? Because, uh oh, that wasn't expected. 
There are two solutions because uh, P and Q are interchangeable. Notice that we had a product and a sum. They're both commutative. Commute? Anyway, something like that. So if we expand it, uh, Y is P of X. Remember that? It's going to give us two things. X squared plus 4X plus X squared. I'm going to go with the plus sign first divided by 2. That'll give me 2x squared. When I divide by 2, that'll be x squared. This is 6x, which is going to give me 3x. And 6, half of 6 is just going to be a 3. Make sense? So that is p of x. Uh-oh. What is q of x? If that's p of x, then q of x can be found by the formula. What was the formula? Remember, we substituted x squared plus 4x minus p of x. So to find them, uh, I just need to subtract p of x, which is x squared minus 3x minus 3. x squared cancels out, and q of x becomes x minus 3. So this is p of x, this is p of x, and this is q of x. And of course, because they are interchangeable, p of x and q of x can be switched around. Does that make sense? Uh, either way is fine. And that's the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick. For my second method, I'm going to use a really nice identity. And would it be okay if I just replace P of X with P and Q of X with Q? That'll be, save me some time. So the identity goes as follows. P plus Q squared and P minus Q squared. This is something really amazing because if you subtract these two things, the p squared, q squared all cancel out. You end up with 2pq, but you get it twice. Make sense? Learn this identity because it's very, very helpful. Now, notice that we have the sum, which is x squared plus 4x squared. This is given. I don't know p minus q, but I also know the product. If I multiply that the product by 4, remember, that was x cubed minus 6x minus 9. It will be 4x cubed minus 24x minus 36. The goal is to solve for P minus Q squared. And let me tell you what that's going to become. It's going to be X to the fourth. And you're going to recognize this when you see it, okay? 16X squared plus 24X plus 36. Yes. When you square root it, square root it, you're going to get the exact same thing. P minus Q is going to be X squared plus 2X plus 6. But guess what? There's going to be two polynomials whose square equals that. But don't worry about it because the plus minus sign will take care of it because we can always switch P and Q around. Make sense? And along with uh, the knowledge uh, from P plus Q, you can go ahead and solve this as a system just like before. Remember the delta stuff and you can find P and Q the same way. So I don't really need to go over this. And guess what? I still need to show you the third method because did I say I was going to present three methods? If I didn't, I apologize. But the third method is actually really, really cool because think about it. P of X times Q of X was given as X cubed minus 6X minus 9, right? So can I factor the cubic? And the answer is yes. There's a couple of ways to go about it. I'm not going to go into the details, but let me just tell you, you can use the rational root theorem and you're going to realize at some point that X equals 3 is a solution. So I can kind of break this down like that. And then I can factor it. Look, this is difference of two cubes, a lot of formulas, right? All over the place. And this is just uh, factoring the negative six out. Now we have a common factor, which verifies the fact that X equals three is a solution because by factor theorem, that means uh, X minus three is a factor, right? So now in the factored form, our expression is gonna look like this. Wait a minute, I messed up somewhere. Oh. Where did I mess up? Oh, I forgot the positive 18, right? When I distribute, wait a minute, is that right? X squared plus, oh, I was supposed to subtract uh, minus six only. Yeah, yeah, it's not six X, it's just six. Okay, got it. I'm like, what is going on? And that's supposed to be a three now. There you go. And yes, that's the factor form. So this is P of X times Q of X. What does this tell you? Well, one of them is probably P of X and the other one is Q of X and vice versa. But guess what? You need to check with the second equation, which is actually very easy to do. If you add P of X and Q of X, you get X minus 3 plus X squared minus 3X plus 3, which is X squared minus 2X. And that just, wait a minute, this didn't work. 
Um, let's see. Oh, that's supposed to be a plus sign. Sorry, I make a lot of mistakes, but then I fix them, right? <laughs> okay, sometimes I don't. But x squared plus 4x would be the sum. So yes, it's verified. Therefore, p of x and q of x can be given like this or vice versa. You can kind of switch them around. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem? I haven't tried it. Give it a try and let me know what you think or what you find because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.